Well, hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm making some Christmas gift tags today and I thought I would bring you along. I think these, I've made a few already and I think that these, um, they turned out really cute and I just think they add such a sweet little touch to a Christmas gift instead of the pre-packaged ones that come in the store. And for these, I've just been using watercolor and stamping, um, stamping and then embossing with uh, embossing powder. And then uh, it really gives a really nice look, nice finish, I think. And so I'll show you the few that I've made so far. Um, so I've just been using metallic embossing powder or uh, clear iridescent they all know i'm gonna get out the sparkles <laughs> uh, when it comes to christmas time everything is glittery and sparkly and i can't help it but um i'm just really impressed with the way that the texture and these backgrounds turned out they're super easy to do and when you use the uh, embossing powder and you go over it with the watercolor it acts as a resist and so it gives like some really cool effects and it makes it like super quick to do so i love how this little green background turned out I'm not sure how well camera's picking it up but so i just did all these with watercolor on top of the embossing and um stuck some little ribbon in there to tie it on the package and thought they turned out really cute so let me show you guys how i did these we'll do a couple more today and so what i used was hot pressed water paper now a couple of them i did use i started out using cold press and it does work and it's fine but um like, I don't know if you can tell on this one, this has got a lot of tiny little text and the combination of that and then the, the rough textured paper, sometimes it, your images may not come out as clear as you want them. So I'm using the smooth hot press paper. This is uh, Fabriano, 25% uh, cotton, I think. It's only um, hot press I had. And then I'm using, you know, stamps because, well, let's just face it, I cannot really draw anything realistic. Uh, we're just using some Christmas stamps today. And then I have, I'll just show you real quick the ones that I am using. And I think I got these from Amazon. They were pretty cheap if I remember correctly. And I'll try to link them for you. I'm not, I knew that was gonna happen. Uh, I'm not exactly sure um, if they still have them, but, uh, cause I think I got these last year. But anyway, I will try to link those for you in the description, along with the other supplies that uh, we'll be using today. But I just really love this set. Like it is just super cute. I love all the little detail in these um, ornaments and Christmas trees. And so that's kind of the ones that we're working with today. But um, I think I'm going to go through with the solid color on those. Um, because I will tell you that, you know, this little guy... You can see here that one had a lot of detail in it and coloring each little thing in separately um, is a little tedious but it does look super cute but anyway these will probably be solid colors but all right so um hot press paper and then i am going to use uh, stamping platform just because I have it and it works good for me. It's not necessary. 
you can just use an acrylic block now my tags that i've been working on you can make them any size you like the ones that i have made are kind of big i guess um i don't know they just they fit my stamped images really well and that's kind of what i based my sizing on and so if you have smaller images um, then you can make you know a smaller tag but these are two and a half inch wide by five tall and so that seems to be a, a pretty good size and all right so let me just get this loaded in here really quick and i just went ahead and put, i'm going to do three tags off of this one piece of paper and i just kind of did some lines on here just kind of sketched out where i thought my tape might go and the only reason i did that was because um you know so i could try to get the stamped the stamps kind of lined up and um kind of centered now i do have this little reindeer over here and his legs are not going to be on the tag unfortunately so they're hanging off but we will make it work anyway okay and so i just put everything on there kind of like i wanted it and then oh i can't put that there i'm just putting my magnets down so it'll hold my paper and then let me see there now everything is in place just like we want it now i'm only going to do one at a time uh but i won't do them all on video that way you don't have to watch the same thing over and over all right so i've been using one of two things um either the versamark ink this is a clear ink for embossing and um the other one is this Hero Arts pigment ink in Unicorn. It's just a white ink. Both of these are a little slower drying than, let's say, Distress inks. So it makes it uh, easier to emboss with. You don't uh, necessarily have to have those particular kinds. Uh, Stays on, I think, works really good too. And then this is my little anti static. Um, pouch here and I'm just going over that just to keep excess powder from sticking to my paper if you don't have that you might try a um, what do you call those dryer sheets uh, just run a, a dryer sheet over there and that will help some of that static uh, from sticking getting all those extra little yeah all right um let me i need to fix this <laughs> all right so i have this one stamp is hanging off this ledge over here and it's not gonna stamp well so let me resituate this real quick and i will be right back okay we're good to go i just had to scoot that over a sec and i'm going to stick something under here just because that's hard to see maybe i can see that a little bit better all right so i'm thinking for this first one that is the christmas ball i am thinking i want to probably do a red ball and i'm going to do gold on the powder uh, the embossing powder let me show you what i've got um 
My gold is this WOW embossing powder. Metallic gold rich, super fine. Um, I like that one. It, it's good. I like that one a lot. And then the silver one that I have is from Lindy's. And it is Slam Dunk Silver. It's really good silver. And then let me show you uh, another Lindy's that I have. I have this Angel Wings. Uh, yeah, well, it says Angel Wings Peacock. But that's the one that's got a little bit of iridescent powder in it. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's got some iridescent uh, flecks in there. So otherwise, it's clear. And then I have a solid white from Lindy's as well. Wowzers white. So those are the ones that I've pretty much been using. All right. So I am going to do the um, ornament, the ball in the gold. So I'm going to use the clear. And I do like uh, using the platform just because, you know, you can uh, stamp over it more than one time and it'll always wind up in the same place all right so i'm just going to ink that up i've got this little baron tool that i got i think this thing came from timu all right and then you can kind of see uh oh i think i just moved that Uh, let me check this real quick. All right. Let's go again because it didn't all. Let me try this down here on this. Looks like I might have got off a little bit, but I think it'll be okay. You can kind of see in the light where it's shiny, so you can tell if you got a good image or not. Stuff is a little sticky. All right. Well, I have messed that up. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I had to cut that one off, and I'll have to redo it. But uh, I'm just going to keep going. Sometimes stuff happens and I moved my image. All right. So I'm going to move on to the next one and uh, I'll redo that other one here in a little bit. All right. So this one I think I want to do in silver. So let's see. We can do a better job. I put some tape on there because this stuff is so sticky. I think it pulled on my paper. And uh, that's why it got messed up. Okay, much better, much better. Just trying to make sure. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Looks like we've got a good image. All right, now, probably easier to do one at a time. I was uh, apparently a little too ambitious. All right, let's do this over.
Well, if you don't have a trade, uh, I find that a uh, coffee filter works pretty good or just a piece of paper. You put a good crease in the middle of it, it works good. All right. See, we got a good image. I just have a lot of extra. So let me. Got this little fan brush here. Try to get some of this extra off with. With that little um, tool, this boat, there it goes. Little anti static tool is supposed to help with that. Okay, I had to clean that up just a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's get the embossing gun. Takes a couple minutes for this to warm up. Okay, I think she is looking good. Okay, now I tell you what, let me go ahead and I'm going to stamp these other two images and emboss those and then I'll come back and we'll do the watercolor. Okay, I got all of that embossed and everything taped down. I went ahead and made another one of these. And uh, let's see. So I was thinking about using Daniel Smith, but I actually think I'm going to use my Ganzai Tambies today. So let me show you my colors real quick. I have uh, 506 Shadow Green here, Green Gray, which is 504. Venetian Red, 403, and 401 Flax Beige. Uh, those are all from the Art Nouveau, and I'm going to use those over here. So what I think we'll do is let's do a little reindeer first. I'm going to go in with just clear water now some of this this embossing will provide a resist and so there'll be parts of the design that won't get any colored paint Because it has to like soak down through the little cracks or whatever. But this makes it so quick and easy. All right, so I'm thinking I want to do a little bit of the gray. 
And then we'll go in and add a little bit of that Venetia red. Just for a little bit of the extra pop. Here, let me kind of soak that up. Went out of the lines. It's just an old cut up t shirt. And if it doesn't all have color down in there, I'm fine with that. Let's see. Just trying to go down in those little holes in a couple of spots. Okay, yeah, those little um, areas are pretty tight. All right, now I'm just going to use a little bit of the Venetian red. Oh, that's going to look so nice. Kind of afraid of going in straight with the Venetian red because I thought it might be too much. But uh, let's see. Let me grab a paper towel here. Okay. Let's see. I'll have to clean that. And. Yeah. Right there. Probably don't want to use very much paint with the embossing when the, the detail is so tight like that. All right, I'm going to wash my brush out and dab it off. And I'm going to go in here and just kind of lift up this little boo boo. Up a little bit boos. I've been doing all kinds of those today. Ah. Hopefully that um, dark green background will cover that up. Whatever doesn't come off. Okay. Then Let's work on this one. So this one, uh, those were from the Art Nouveau set. This is from the 48 set of the Ganzai Tambies. Uh, 35 Carmine. 30 Cadmium Red. And 50 Malachite. All right. But let's kind of do the same thing over here. Just going to do a little wet on wet. Okay, I'm going to go in with the, what was it? Carmine. Oh, that's bright. Pretty. See how it just resists that? Oh, it makes it so easy. It just works so good. I think I'm going to try to leave it a little bit lighter. And in the middle. And kind of get a couple of those little spots that 
are still white. I was thinking I would add a little of this other red along with it. Let's just see what that looks like. I don't want much of the color. More orange, I think, than anything. All right, I think that's that's good. We're going to let that dry. Okay, and then I hadn't picked out my colors for this one yet. Thought about leaving the star kind of white, but I think I'm just going to paint all of it. I want a little bit deeper shades of blue. The other blue tags I've done have been pretty light. So let's see, here is indigo. Let's try this blue gray deep. Those look good. And let's see. Want. I don't know if we want to add a pop of something else in there. That grayish blue. That grayish blue in the Art Nouveau set might be pretty. I might get it out just, just in case we decide we want it. Okay. I have some clean water oops in here well that's the uh, grayish blue this one is the indigo and so then this one is the blue gray deep here let's put them over here by this okay let me hit this with the um the dryer real quick so we can uh, put a piece of tape down. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little piece of tape on the edge here just to keep me from painting in the wrong spot. I just had this little loose piece of washi tape, so I'll just borrow that. But I can see some paint on there from when I used it earlier. So let me clean that off. Oh, actually, it's blue. It's fine. All right. So I am going to take a big brush. What happened to it? Oh, we'll use this one. So I'm going to take kind of a mop brush. And just wet this whole thing. I might have put a little much. You don't have to tape these down, but if you get them very wet, they'll, of course, they'll curl and. And they do kind of curl a little bit anyway, a little bit, but I mean, it's going to be on a bag or a box, so it's fine. All right, let's see. Let, I'm going to, let me start with the lightest color. I am going to try this. A little bit of the blue gray deep. Oh goodness, this is going to look great. Do the lighter color kind of in the middle, in the center. And I really want this really dark. Do this. Um, is it blue, gray, deep? Yes. Uh, Oh goodness, look at that. Let 
do this like around the edges. Almost like a little vignette. All right, and then we take the indigo. We'll kind of, oh yeah, do that in here. Let me get just a little more of this. Okay, and I think that I'm going to use some salt. Because it winds up kind of looking like snow. This is just fine uh, table salt. Oh, it's already spilling. I've been making such a mess all day. Sprinkle that around. So good. Okay, and that'll have to dry on its own. If you use your heat gun or hair dryer, then the salt's not really able to work its magic. So we'll let that kind of sit and do its thing. We'll let these other two dry a little bit. I gotta put my salt back in the container so i don't make more messes okay so i'm gonna let uh this stuff dry pretty good and then uh we'll go from there hey i think that's pretty pretty good and dry look at that and that so cool it's funny because it looks like the um the latter color blue acted reacted with the salt more than the other shades did. I thought that was kind of interesting. All right, let's uh, scrape some of this off or all of it off. Something I did notice a minute ago is um, these Ganza Tambi paints. You know, they're a little thicker, you know, more like gouache uh, than regular watercolor. So I noticed that they tended to um, kind of cover up that embossing just a little more than the other watercolors that I was using earlier. So... I would just say when you're doing this, you might want to use more water to paint than what I was doing. All right, let's pull this tape back. We got a little leak there. All right, now we're going to put it on this side. Try to smush that down really good so it doesn't leak. Okay. Now let's do the background on this side. I'm going to wet this like I did the other one. Uh-oh. Didn't mean to go over that. I just got all carried away. Okay. 
So I'm going to grab that blue. I'm like a bull in a china closet today. I'm just tearing everything up. You know, it'd be easier if I were to get a smaller brush, but no. Ginger has to do things the hard way, not the smart way. All right. So I want to, let's see, green, gray. Yes, that's the one I wanted to use. Okay. It's going to be a really pretty foresty green. It's a little tedious. These could be Christmas cards or whatever you want. They don't necessarily have to be tags. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm just going to do the one, the one green, but I am going to get some plastic wrap. And we will do a little fun texture. All right. I better hurry though. All right, so I'll pour this little piece of plastic wrap. We'll kind of scrunch it up here. And this will give us a hopefully a fun little pattern or texture on the back. Yeah, you can see it already starting. Let's, uh, let me put some of my glitter. <laughs> I need to put something on there maybe to hold it down a little bit. And this will have to, you know, dry on its own too. Okay. We'll let that dry. Then we'll go over here. I'm going to do this malachite on this one.
seems to be drying quick today. Maybe the heat being on is making it dry faster. Add a little water to that. So I think that I want this to be kind of light. Uh oh, I almost made a mess. And I accidentally got a little red on my outside the Christmas bowl off camera a while ago so i thought oh well i'll just lift it off apparently it's kind of staining so it didn't lift off so i thought well let me just scrub it and i scrubbed it and i tore up my paper i don't think i should be <laughs> uh painting today Could do some bubble wrap on this one. I don't know. Or maybe I could just go in with a little extra color here and there. Need something, but uh, we could put some uh, sequins or oh, uh, foil flakes. We could put something on there for interest. All right, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave that one. Okay, and I'm going to add just a little bit of gold to that top part of the ornament there. Let's see, let's see is this guy rich pale gold. Mm, that looks good. It's a really good little gold palette. Okay, let's let her dry. Okay, let's take a look under here and see what she looks like. Well, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay. All right, so we have everything is pretty well dry. Loving this one. This one, I don't know. Let's see. So, I guess we can untape and go from there. We'll probably need to add a little something here and there. I've got, uh, some glitter and stickles and uh, some washi tape. So we'll trim these down. I did use. I think I mentioned earlier that I did use a tag die cut uh, for a couple of my tags earlier, but I 
found that just doing them like this and cutting them up was just a bunch easier. You got to cut the paper down before you can put it through the die cut machine. And it's just easier, I think, to do it this way. Okay. Well, that looks cute, though. I like it. All right. Let's see. Let me grab my paper trimmer. Hmm. That looks good. I wish that silver stood out a little more against the blue. That looks great. Love that. Love that. Okay. Let's need to trim just a hair off of that. This poor guy is losing his legs. Sorry, dude. You're too, your legs are too long. Mm, that looks good, though. Not cool. All right, that was two. One more. Kind of like that little border around it. I think I am going to wait to trim the top because I got it the ornament a little too close to the top and I don't know if I'm how much room I'm going to have for the hole so let me see here well there's enough room yeah we can cut it Move this out of the way. You know what? I was actually going to trim this a little bit. It's kind of wide. Okay, I got those uh, trimmed out. And then I, I have a little... A uh, corner trimmer or uh, like a tag shape. It just lops the corners off. And this way, uh, it's the same on both sides. But if you don't, did I use that side? Yeah. If you don't have one of these, one trick is to just, you know, use your scissors and cut one side if you don't have a template and then take that 
and hold it on this side and use a pair of scissors. Match that up. And then both sides will be the same. So let me get these. I'm trying to think of how I want to decorate these or finish decorating them, I should say. Okay. So I uh, also got some gel pens. I think I might take, I've got a silver, yeah. Oh, let me do the hole. Let me do the hole first. This one is actually going to get punched into. Just a little bit on that string. And I just try to eyeball a center. You could measure it out if you want to. Okay, it's probably a little shallow. All right, so I'm going to take my gel pen on this one and just do a little bit of a border, kind of like this one. Maybe that'll kind of help that snowflake to stand out a little more, help it pop. This is a Jelly Roll gel pen. I'm just going to kind of go along the side. Hmm. And why do you not want to write? I have an idea. Look, I have silver stickles. All right, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. All right, that pretty good. I like that. I don't know if it's showing up on camera very well, but I'm going to set this aside and let it dry before I tear it up. And then uh, I'll show you a close up. Okay, that's good. Now we have this one and this one. So, I think I'm going to use the gold, uh, the gold gel pen and do the same for this. So I used my Posca earlier and I didn't really like how it came out. So I'm going to use, I've got a Uniball Signo in gold. I'm going to use that. And what do you know? She works. Yay. Okay. Oh, I like how that looks. That looks good. Good, good. 
And then, um, let's see, the other thing is I, you can use some of these hole reinforcements if you want. I took a couple of them and colored them gold with my Posca. Let's see. Then I also had this other, um, it's like a gold foil pen deco color and that one is like super shiny isn't that funny how all gold is so many different colors like it's hard to find golds that match each other let's use this No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, let's line up here. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. I like it. Let's see what we could do. That one looks all right. We don't have to use a whole reinforce reinforcer. Let's see. All right, I have this washi tape, real skinny little washi tape, and I think that I'm gonna try to go around the edge of this one. Oh, let's see if I can get them out. All right, let's see here. Okay, I'll just use this little block here to tear it there instead of trying to cut it. Looks like there might be something wrong <laughs> with this washi tape. Huh. Looks like some of the red is wearing off of it. Oh gosh, I, I give up. <laughs> I give up. We're just using it. Guess it's like Murphy's Law or something. Everything goes fine till you turn the camera on.
All right. That's cute. All things considered. <laughs> All right. Does it need anything else? All right, let's get some ribbon. All right, I got a couple little pieces of ribbon here. I've been cutting my ribbon at 12 inches because um, I'm actually planning on using them on a gift. So uh, normally if I was just making a mixed media tag or something, I would put several pieces on and uh, have them, you know, shorter and fluffier. But since we're actually using these, I'm going to make them a little bit longer. If I just feed them through the from the front to the back, and then just a little word of caution: be careful when you're pulling these tight, because it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to rip through your tag, even if you have a reinforcer on there. Just FYI. Oh, that looks so good. That'll be good for a, um, like a masculine gift. Look good for a dude. Let's put them through there. And this ribbon is kind of a burlap type ribbon, and it's a bit, a bit hard to thread through there. Sometimes I have to do it just one at a time. It's a stick to itself. That's cute. All right. This one is mostly dry. Add a little silver ribbon to this one. I think this is like probably an eighth of an inch wide. I don't know. This one might be even skinnier than that. There she goes. Well, I think those turned out really good. The three that we made today. And other ones I had already finished. I guess I should clean my table off. Oh, they turned out so good. I, that's got to be my favorite. That one. And that one, too. But then I like that one. <laughs> I like them all. Uh, you cannot see all of this. All right. I will uh, take a close-up for you guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you have uh, fun making your gift tags. And feel free to tag me on Instagram. And let me see what you have come up with. I'd love to see your work. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. I will talk to you on the next video. See you then. Bye, guys.